This program contains views and opinions that may not be suitable for all audiences. Audience discretion is advised. Welcome to Constructive Deconstruction, everybody. I am your host, Gomer the Ranting Thespian, and my co-host this week, as always, are Holly Christine and Misha Mayhem. Hello. Hi, and he actually remembered to introduce us this week. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Which is interesting. This is the only show thus far that I've actually more consistently forgotten to actually introduce the two of you. Although it does help you two are constant, too. Well, you didn't introduce us last week, and we had Danny one, too, so good job there. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but, yeah. So, uh, oh, this week, it went by too fast. It seems like just yesterday we recorded the Valentine's Day episode. Yeah. And, and this isn't like the case it was at the end of last year, where we recorded one day, and then we recorded the next day. No, this has actually been a week. <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah. wow. <laughs> it just, just went by way too fast. Uh, with, with all the other drama, which I will address on other shows um, concerning a, a certain internet company. Oh, quote unquote oh. company. But that's for oh, another show. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, by the way, I saw that thing that you posted last night about the logo and pie chart thing. I'm like, oh, look, it's PME, the uh, pie chart and logo edition. Yes. And. And I found that one through Mel, actually. Mel, the office gamer girl. I like Mel, and I'm glad she's on the site now. I, I am too. She she's got really she's got really nice, you know, short videos, and and when she, when I think the site is now up to the point where she starts using her little theme song, and it's so catchy. Nice. I met her through the Amy's Baking Company thing. We were all making fun <laughs> of that shit. <laughs> she's great. Yes. <laughs> Oh, so, so yeah, this week we are finally going to talk about a topic that's been a few weeks coming, but then different things happened, and we just kept not doing it. A few weeks? More like a month and a half. Yeah, give or take. Oh, yeah, that's right. There was at least one week where we didn't, where we weren't able to do a show. So, or yeah. two, actually. Yeah. So, okay. So, about a month and a half. You're about right there. Yeah. And uh, this is our big net neutrality show. I, I, I say big, but we'll see how big it really gets. Uh, for those who haven't been following, have been living under a rock, or, or just now getting introduced to the internet as it is now, uh, what net neutrality is meant to do is tell all the internet service providers such as AT&T, Comcast, Time Warner, etc., 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 that... You know what? Your customers pay for your service. You give them, you know, you don't throttle any of their bandwidth. You you get you let them have the same bandwidth no matter what site they go to, even if it's your competitors, you have to let them have it. That's that's at least in part of the net neutrality thing as far as I'm understanding it. Um Holly, I I, I think you've looked into it a little bit more than I have. I know you've we've talked about it before. Um can you add anything to that or Um, yeah, I have done some research on it and like especially yesterday i was looking up the whole snowden situation um and yeah it's i don't know it's just creepy <laughs> like you know the government doesn't need to know what you're looking at on i, I just let's not become china please yeah. where you know search engines are only going to give us certain results because the government deems the stuff that we want to look at is inappropriate. Yeah, I mean, it's it's one thing if you want to have, say, a rating system, like your rating systems for movies, video games, whatever. That's a rating system. That's fine. That's pretty much letting you know, yeah, this is what's going to be here, and letting you just you the consumer decide. Yeah, that's at your discretion, not theirs. Right. It, it's yeah. not the government's place to decide what's appropriate for everybody. To a degree, yeah. I mean, I don't think we need to have like secret military tactics out there on the internet at large that 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 would be kind of a danger to our troops out there at least unless unless they share like after the fact or something when it's yeah okay we can share that they've already done this ha <laughs> ha you know which i think could be a double-edged sword too because what if that thing was like oh take down this country that we had no business taking down oh wait didn't we do that <laughs> mm. oh but uh anyway so uh, that dude. Uh, yeah, it's a slippery slope. I mean, I feel Google does a good, like, a good job with the um, safe search results, like when you're searching Google images or something like that. If they wanted to implement 
implement that kind of thing where, you know, certain content you just won't see, but it's at your own choosing. That's fine exactly. with me. But to you just decide that. what we can and cannot see. Yeah. yeah. Not cool. And, and the thing is, they already have programs like that out there. They have programs you can install onto your computer that can block certain sites, you know, like, and it's usually for, like, child, you know, like if a child's using the computer, they can't go to a certain website and expect to see it without, say, the password or, or whatever. You know, they have yeah, things like that. Yeah, if we figured out how to V-chip televisions, I don't understand why this is such a difficult thing for us to figure out how to do. Yeah. Without infringing on people's rights. Right. And, and like you said, the Google Safe Search. Good idea. I, in fact, I, okay, I usually leave it off because, well, if I'm Google searching images for something, I like to sometimes torture <laughs> myself. Because you're an adult and you don't need to be babysat. Exactly. <laughs> I, I totally do not need to be babysat, although I would keep the kids away from the Pokemon Quartz ROM hack. Uh, that 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 uh, okay. The wrong hack. I keep I I keep kids away from most of the stuff that you look at probably, but that's just me. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'd say about fifty percent of it. Yeah. So at Love least that I... number of a bit. Uh, no, I'm kidding. <laughs> <laughs> Don't ever let them near Tumblr. Never or fanfiction.net. Oh never. god. <laughs> oh god. Ever ever. Yeah. <laughs> or even Reddit. Oh God! Or 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 even Four-chan. Buzzfeed. Buzzfeed sometimes. So oh yeah, good lord. And and Holly mentioned 4chan, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Buzzfeed is Kings. just addictive though. Yeah. <laughs> mm-hmm. <sighs> but, yeah. Nobody should visit Return of Kings ever. Ever, ever. And yeah, ever. And Somebody yeah. asked me the other day if I, if I thought that website was just like a big joke and. You know, no, maybe it was just a really good parody. I was like, I feel like multiple Twitter accounts for the writers is like, it's going a little far for parody for me. Yeah. And I, you know, I can't help but think that there's got to be some actual intent to be douchebags yeah, behind I, that. I, mm-hmm. Yeah, I looked at the site stuff, the about, and all. I'm like, yeah, there's no way this is a, a satire site. There's no way. Yeah. I mean, if you fooled us all, congratulations, but... If they fooled us um, all, they should be working for WWE because, <laughs> damn. Because <laughs> WWE needs that desperately because they ain't doing shit. But if you're just doing it to be an asshole, then go fuck yourself. Exactly. So, <laughs> exactly. But moving along. <laughs> yeah. But all these sites we've listed well, that we're, we're, we're pretty much saying don't let your kids go near, nobody should go see it or whatever. I we're not... Yeah. Exactly. Like those two. Like that guy, too. Um. <laughs> But um, <laughs> we also are going to leave it to you guys as listeners. If you decide to go against our advice and go see them, then, okay, we'll probably laugh at you if you have a funny reaction to it. Or in the case of Project Million Entertainment, because, well, some of that dirty laundry is right up there on their news pages. Uh, yeah, we're going to look um. at you. And, well, yeah, at least some of the most recent ones. But... um but yeah, we'll, we'll just look at you and we're like, oh, I'm sorry you got involved in this. <laughs> we'll just look at you with pity. I will yeah. laugh. I will fucking laugh. Be like, I told you so. Yeah. Because I can do that to most of my friends and followers. I'll be like, I fucking told you so. Now go cry. <laughs> <laughs> it's your fault. I told you. It's like a child. It's like, don't touch that hot stove. And they do it anyway. It's like, ah, ah, I told you. I'm not yeah. gonna kiss and make it better. Go away. Yeah. God, I should never be a parent. <laughs> yeah. So I, anyway, <laughs> I, the most I would do, I would put the ointment on, and then I would say, "You know, you know, not to do that anymore, right?" And then watch him five minutes later go back and do it again. Uh, no, my, yeah. well, the kids here are not that stupid, thankfully. Uh. But um, but as I was saying, you know, all of these sites were were, were kind of poking at and 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 ragging on and everything. For good reason in a, in, in a lot of cases. You know, again, like I said, if, if you want to go to them, if you decide you want to go to them, that's your business. The government wants to make it their business to say, no, we don't like those sites, so you should not go to them. So they, they would want to outright take away your option to go to this site or that site. And we say the government, but who's really behind the government in all of this are the telecommunications um companies such as AT&T, Comcast, Time Warner, the ones that they're the, 
like it was like AT and T. I want to say a couple of years ago that that pretty much got had a little bit of a bitch fit because all of their users were using their unlimited data plan too much. It's like that's actually who I have is AT and T <laughs> and Comcast. So two of the worst offenders. I have them both. Yeah, I, I we have AT and T here, and um, now now here is the thing. I brought, since I brought up AT and T. I found this article a little while ago on policymike.com, which I will link to below. Um, And it's a story that follows AT&T pursuing a patent that will help ISPs detect what type of content users are consuming on the Internet and will allow companies to charge higher rates for accessing different services. You know, such as, okay, $5 for Facebook, $20 for Netflix. I've already heard Verizon is already throttling Netflix. Mm. Or at least, yeah, yeah. Titled, bullshit. yeah, titled "The Prevention of Bandwidth Abuse of a Communication System." The patent describes a credits-based system where data being downloaded can be checked to determine if it is permissible or non-permissible. Non-permissible data are specific types of high bandwidth activities that the provider would like to regulate, such as file sharing and movie downloads. When detected, accessing non-permissible data would result in a deduction of credits, allowing the ISP to levy additional fees, apply sanctions, or cancel service in response. So in other words, if you went and downloaded the room, whether legally or illegally, it doesn't say, you know, they could say, oh, we don't like Tommy Wiseau, so we're going to shut off your service. Yeah. I'm not going to say anything about that because... (laughs) (laughs) Well, whether you like the room or not. (laughs) The patent, which was filed in September, but brought to the attention of the internet community... It's an interesting sort of battle. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, But I I was just saying it's an interesting sort of battle because it's like Google versus the the carriers. Um, And Google continues to lay more fiber out there to um, be able to expand their networks. In the meantime, the internet companies, the ISPs are going to Washington and, you know, pulling the strings to, you know, see what they can make happen in terms yeah. of not having to give the kind of service that they promised people and they're contracted to give people. Yeah. Gee, it's, 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 it's funny. It's almost like some other company, except without the lobbying. Um, yeah. Yeah. Uh, or, yeah, I hope you guys will excuse me. There will probably be a lot of take that's to uh, Project Million Entertainment throughout the show. Uh, yeah. The patent, which was filed in the, like I said, the patent was filed in September, brought to the attention of the internet community. The article says last week, but for us it's more last month. Has angered many net neutrality advocates who believe that the internet should remain free, a free and open resource for all, as it should. Because if you're able to control the information, you're able to control what people see and thus control what people think because they only know certain sides of the story. I mean, it, it's, it's like, you know, it's – again, I'm going to go back to the PME example. Somebody posts a comment there with evidence of their wrongdoing. They delete it, and so anybody who, is, who may or may, may have just found them uh, don't know the whole story and may end up falling in, you know, into their little little uh, trap there and get fucked over like some of us other people have. So you know, there that's, you know, that's kind of one of the dangers of it. Yeah, and I'm going to continue to use China as an example. Yeah, you know, Baidu, which is the largest search engine in China, because um, Google left China in like 2007 or 2009. I can't remember. But anyway, um, Baidu was founded by this guy, Robin Lee, and um, it works in a lot of similar ways to Google. And uh, it's more useful to the Chinese people because of the way it's formatted. Right. Um, Just because of the language system being different. Anyway, you know, he fully complies with the Chinese government on what people can see. So... There, you don't even have the option to see it. Yeah. You know, when you search for something, it never comes up. Yeah, which is, I, I find quite dangerous because you're going to have the people out there that are going to question. No matter what kind of government you have, they're going to question. And you're going to stifle them. And 
to me, it just makes your government look like it has a tiny metaphorical dick. You're that insecure. You want to keep that power so much. You're so insecure about it that you have to quash anybody and everybody, and this is one way to do it. Well, and the weird thing is that it's not, you know, it's not like they're protecting state secrets. It's like one of the things that you can't do in China is use Facebook. Yeah. It's... Are you serious? Yeah. Yeah, point me okay. to a Chinese person on Facebook that lives in China. Hmm. Uh, mm. But yes. So. Yeah, Facebook was banned by the Chinese government years ago. Um, and while they've been trying to find a way to get back in, you know, there's something about... Well, let's let's just be straight about it. The Chinese government doesn't want people to talk to each other. No. The Chinese government doesn't want people to have more access to the outside world. And when you're on Facebook, you know, most people that I know get their news from social media where somebody has posted something and then you just follow it through. Yes. And that's the, the kind of danger, in quotation marks, <laughs> that Facebook poses to the Chinese government. Yeah. Oh no, it's people questioning stuff. Oh my god. And exposing Terrible. exposing horrific things that our government may or may not have done. Shit, we do that here. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. well, Good. Edward Snowden. There you, you know, go. Stole yep. hundreds of thousands, if not millions of files from the NSA. Mm -hmm. Yep. Now, now he's trapped in Russia because his passport was revoked. And uh. the, Russia gave him asylum. Uh, <laughs> and... Most of what he is exposed is the fact that the government listens to our phone calls. The government tracks what we do on the internet. Yeah. Hi, NSA. Hmm. I'm sure you're listening to this. Another reason to not talk on the phone. I hate talking on the phone. Like, I <laughs> loved it when I was, like, 16, 17. I'm probably all the way up to, like, 19 or 20. Now I'm just, like, when somebody calls me, I'm like, oh, my God, are you fucking kidding me? Learn how to text. <laughs> um, <laughs> I am almost the same. Uh, yeah. But I, but I do I do have <laughs> some good uses for my phone so yeah when I get a voicemail I don't check it just to see what I don't check it to see what somebody left a message to say I check it to get rid of the fucking icon <laughs> don't leave me don't leave me voicemails unless it's an emergency <laughs> oh my god I hate it Skype motherfucker <laughs> yeah or text there you go oh oh so so why is this a big deal I mean we we've we've covered a lot of it. But uh, the article goes on to talk about uh, net neutrality, explaining that it is the principle that all Internet traffic should be treated equally so providers are not able to charge differentially on the basis of user content, ensuring consumer choice, and a level playing field for competition and service provision. You know, like if we want to go like, – like say we want to go to Etsy, for example, and – well, in fact, let, let's say we all want to go and buy something from Holly's shop. Let's, let's say that for example. Right now, we should be able to. I, I don't think anybody is really, you know, you know, throttling on Etsy at this point. But what if, say, eBay doesn't like that? They don't like Etsy for whatever reason, and they pay a shit ton of money to AT and T, for example. And AT and T starts throttling, and I'm on AT and T. I go, and I kind of get a little uh, impatient if there's a long load time. I'm probably just that spoiled, unfortunately. So me being that impatient, I would probably end up going somewhere else or going to eBay where it loads just fine. Now, and having said this, I probably won't do it just out of spite, but that, I think that gives a good example of what, you know, of, of what net neutrality is blocking here or trying to block here, I believe. Mm -hmm. So... Yeah, and they're they're going about it different ways. It's not just necessarily, um, you know, slowing down your connection um, for certain sites, but like one of the things that they have done is um, AT and T introduces a system that lets website owners foot a portion of their visitors' broadband bills. So. Instead of going directly after the consumer, the ISPs are going after the different websites. Um, oh. And yeah, and Netflix is you know, just kind of pissed off about this whole thing. 
um, you know, AT and T has introduced this system to um, let website owners split a portion of their visitors' broadband bills. So they're not going after the consumers directly; they're going after the I, the website owners. Um, and yeah, Netflix is pretty pissed off about it. Yeah. Um, this is um, from a the Netflix top execs. Uh, in reference to the Verizon legal win uh, about throttling uh, your connection. In principle, a domestic ISP can now legally impede the video streams that members request from Netflix. The motivation would be to get Netflix to pay fees to stop this degradation. Were this draconian scenario to unfold with some ISP, we would vigorously protest and encourage members to demand just because and I, I guess for me this is like the most important thing for listeners you know the general consumer to remember just because they're not going after you now doesn't mean that they can't take away your service because there are going to be lots of websites that can't foot the bill yeah I mean what if they what if they went after say some of our websites, you know, Nerdvice, uh, my site, that guy with the glasses, uh, RVT. None of us could foot that bill. I know I sure as hell couldn't. You know, although I, although I think yeah. in the, although I have a feeling if they went after if they wanted to go after like Nerdvice or my site, they would probably go after WordPress first, considering they are WordPress based. But I'm not sure about that. Yeah. But yeah, yeah, they're going after the biggest people um, in an effort to get them to drive their prices up. Mm -hmm. um, and so they're still getting their money. But they're just not doing it directly from us. They're getting the money from the websites and hoping the websites will then take it from us. Yeah, and I'm I'm sure there are some unscrupulous websites that will do it, but. But uh, yeah, it's 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 yeah. So so uh, so go back to why this is a big deal. Again, we've been touching on things here and there, and here the article states outright. A few weeks ago, as of this article, a Washington D.C. district court dis decision dealt a huge blow to net neutra neutrality by overturning part of the FCC's Open Internet Order 2010, which mandated for tight regulation of ISPs by classifying them under the same common carrier status as older telephone carriers. In its absence, service providers such as AT&T and Verizon may be allowed to engage in profitable data differentiation activities such as traffic shaping or tiered servicing. Or just outright throttling your, you know, your Netflix, as we've already mentioned and has been seen to be done. You know, Verizon. I don't think anybody in yeah. this house has Verizon. <laughs> My parents have Verizon, and it's uh, it's worse than Comcast in terms of it actually working. Yeah, I, I used to have Verizon at one point for my cell phone carrier because no, wait, no. No, I used to have Altel. Then Altel was bought up by Verizon and AT&T, uh. and then and when that happened, my my Altel got transferred over to AT&T. So, I remember Altel. Yeah, we. That's what that was on my first Razor phone. Yeah, we used to sell Altel stuff at our insurance office because we do more than just insurance there. Oh, I didn't know that, but yeah, my parents have a, a Verizon for their home phone and their internet, mm. and wow, the internet is fucking terrible. Yeah. yeah, I have I have Verizon for my cell phone, and it I find it doing weird things. Like there are certain numbers that I can't call. What? For instance, um, when the news came out about Justin, I called Luke, mm -hmm. but I get a busy signal. So I called Mark, who is the president of Con Bravo. Mm -hmm. Same area code. That call went through, but I can't call Luke. Don't know why. That's weird. Thanks, thanks Verizon. Yeah, thanks that's Verizon. That's fucked up. That is. Uh, uh, yeah, you know, phone companies, ISPs. Before I continue much any further, listen to me. All right, this old bullshit about about throttling and 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 you know only 
giving the best service for some of what your consumers use your internet for, you know, uh, keep in mind legal as long as it's legal, of course. This is gonna have this. This needs to stop. Okay, you guys are greedy motherfuckers. You can afford to take a hit or two, if need be, and and you don't need more money because you know, you 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 already you're part of the one percent that controls most of the money in this country. You don't need all of it. Well, the funny part is Google is still <laughs> they're they're like the Robin Hood of the internet. <laughs> you know, they're they're caching like YouTube videos, so the YouTube video is closer to you, so you still get it. Um, it, it just streams from a from a closer place to you. There you go. So, um, yeah, and th- that's pretty typical, but they also have been coming up with various tricks to improve streaming uh, and data compression. Hmm. Yeah, so... So... Yeah. And and they're pretty clear about, you know, where the problem lies. Um, when your ISP receives your video from YouTube, they begin to... They begin the important job of carrying it across the network to your home. Mm-hmm. Um, and this is from a... From their website, Video Quality Report website. Um... Yeah, and there was an illustration with a blocked pipe. <laughs> it <laughs> says we can't do it alone. They must ensure there's enough capacity where they receive the data from YouTube. Otherwise, your video streaming quality will suffer. Oh yeah. In addition to congestion in your ISP's network, so your video performance can also be affected by the size of the ISP's connection to your home, your Wi-Fi setup, and other in-home factors such as the number of connected devices. So you know. It, it's like they're casually taking a dig at the ISPs, you know, but also padding that a little with, you know, it might be your home, but... It's, it's most likely your ISP you know. being a dick. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Because they don't want you to see that, that, that old 1980s Cindy Lauper video. They, they want you to watch this thing, you know, I'm... I'm they might want you to watch this thing about Pat Robertson talking about Jesus. No, and all that. no, that'd be like that's like that's Liberty University. Seriously, they 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 probably love they probably love this because they're probably like because they they love you know censoring what you can and cannot look at on the internet because of their filters or filters or whatever. So they're probably loving the fuck out of this. Oh yes, because these people they just want control, and we don't have to let them keep control. You know, that's why we get out there. We all, you know, local elections, if, you know, if you have local, you know, I'm sure everybody has local elections, you know, get out there if you can, vote in them, start from the ground, work up. Yes, vote in your national elections too, but also keep a good eye on your local elections. Yeah, do that. You know, and if any anybody that you can vote for, any politician you could vote for, if they are in any way behind something like this, you know, let them know with your vote. Say, hey, you know what? I'm not voting for you. Well, I'm going to this other guy who's not going to fuck my connection in the ass. That and, you know, other things. Well, yeah. I mean, yes, of course, they can apply to other things. And uh, I also have here uh, at least the abstract and summary of the patent as cached by Google. Um, the the patent itself, if you just look up, uh, I think the name of the patent is up here, um, Prevention of Bandwidth Abuse of a Communication System. If you look that up on Google, you should be able to find it. Um, the abstract reads, a user of a communications network is prevented from consuming an excessive amount of channel bandwidth by restricting the use of the channel in accordance with the type of data being downloaded to the user. The user is provided an initial number of credits. As, as the consumer consumes the credits, the data being downloaded is checked to determine if it is permissible or non-permissible. Non-permissible data includes file sharing and movie downloads, which we've mentioned before. Um, let's see. Various restriction policies can also be applied, such as levying additional fees or terminating the user's access to the channel. Also, incentives can be provided to entice the user to curb the misuse. So it's like, yeah, if... if, if if you know if you, we want you to stop using blip you know we see you using blip we'd rather you use youtube here you know and, and you know we so so if, if you know we'll, we'll slow down blip but if if you really want you know if you don't want us to cut off your connection because you insist on using blip then um you know we'll we'll, we'll like give you like 3 months free if you stop using blip and i know that was a little bit of a long car ride with that logic but 
But it, it's, it makes just about as much sense to me. <laughs> so, yeah. It's like, incentives, yeah, oh, don't use that. We'll, we'll give you this if you use this site. Hmm, bribes. Yeah. Just like government. Just like the government to do that. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And, and of course, the government's accepting those bribes. That's, that's why lobbyists are still a thing. Yeah. Because the lobbyists, like the NRA, uh, you know, like, I, I think it was, like, this past week, the NRA got pissed off at a bunch of Republicans in Missouri for passing, like, something that would, you know, pull up, you know, that would make a gun registry or something over in Missouri. And instantly, like, almost every, Repu pretty much every Republican in Missouri was like, oh, shit, the NRA's not going to give us money. Okay, oh, uh, uh, we, we take it back, we take it back, we take it back. Uh, there are a lot of extremists in the NRA. There really are, but I I have to say I have a conservative stance on gun rights. But that's a different topic. Yeah, it's 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 <laughs> it's the unfortunately it's the more radicals and and the stuff that are getting the the air time. They're everywhere, everywhere, everywhere. <laughs> <laughs> The, the perfect example of all the, like, they're being crazy even amongst uh, people who are trying to do good. I actually had to unfriend a bunch of atheists last year at some point because basically all they did was go around picking fights with Christians because reasons. Yeah, don't, don't do that. That's not. Yeah, I, I was like, I can't do that. Like, seriously. And then there'll be, you know, some, some, some LGBT rights activists, like, they are like bulldogs. It's like, you're not going to get anywhere if you're just going out and yelling at people. Oh. I mean, I used to be like that. Uh, perfect example, 2008. I worked for the Obama campaign. And, well, of course, also went to Liberty University online. But, yeah, I worked for the Obama campaign, and basically I lost a lot of friends and acquaintances because I was a bitch about it. Like, I was a bulldog about it. I was like, oh, you're not voting for Obama, then you suck. <laughs> yeah, unfortunately, there are people like that on all sides. Yeah, I've learned to, I've, I've learned to definitely chill out. Yeah. Oh, and 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 we've also brought up, you know, the, uh, the non-permissible types of communications according to what they're trying to push here. Downloading and or uploading, they didn't mention uploading in the article, but in the uh, summary of the actual patent, uploading is mentioned of large files. Let's see, what do we do that requires the uploading of large files? Oh wait, this show. My other, Everything. My other two shows. <laughs> pretty much every video producer and or podcaster. You know, I mean, it's just, you know, what, you want us to actually pay more than what we already do? To put our shows up, I mean, we right. Well, and this is this is a big thing: the idea of competition and you know the the little guys who are the innovators. Mm -hmm. uh, people are getting you know pretty upset about um, because you know you go from a market where innovation rules to one where deal making rules. Yeah, I mean. This is what we're trying to escape here, people. Yeah. The internet, um, I'm going to just go ahead and read this quote. Um, this, I think the rest of this is from savetheinternet.com. Um, the internet has always been driven by innovation. Websites and services succeeded and failed on their own merit. Now, if you're talking about charging these people who are, you know, starting up and uploading stuff and all of that, you know, you're stamping that out. Um, the following is from Lawrence Lessig and Robert W. McChesney. Uh -huh. Without net neutrality, that would start to look like cable TV. A handful of massive companies would control access and distribution of cotton, what you see and how much it costs. Major industries such as healthcare, finance, retailing, and gambling would face huge tariffs for fast, secure internet use. Yeah. Most of the great innovators in the history of the internet started out in their garages with great ideas and little capital. This is no accident. Network neutrality protections minimized control by the network owners, maximized competition, and invited outsiders to in to innovate. Net neutrality guaranteed a free and competitive market for internet content. Yeah, and if we didn't have this net neutrality, we most likely would not have had we wouldn't have had a two cents. We wouldn't have had Spazzy Secret Funhouse. You wouldn't have had – probably wouldn't have any of my shows because, well, Two Cents inspired Thespian Talk, which then got spun off now into three different shows. You know, well, well, two shows that I do and then Lesbian Talk, which 
is a spinoff, <laughs> basically. Um, and and even if you you go wouldn't to have Channel Awesome. Exactly, that's exactly where I was about to go. You would not have Channel Awesome. You wouldn't, and by extension, you wouldn't have Nerd Vice or My Side or RVT. Well, well, you wouldn't have PME either. But mm. even then, I would rather those guys be taken down because of their own mistakes, their own thing, as opposed to the government. You know. Yeah, I mean, starting an inter- or a website is a higher cost thing than most guys. But you know, had they been charging Doug for the number of people who were going to thatguywiththeglasses dot com and watching his videos, you know. There was already a huge investment to get the company off the ground. Mm-hmm. He wouldn't have been able to foot the bill, and Channel Awesome wouldn't have been able to foot the bill for the kind of response there was to the Nostalgia Critic when it first started. Right. Yeah, that 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 very famous I Quit video that Doug did, that would not have happened. Yeah. I, I, I highly doubt that would have happened. Oh, I, w- I wish I had the balls to quit a job like that. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, I, I have to admit, that would have been awesome. Ah! Oh. So, yeah, net neutrality. Uh, if you couldn't already tell, yeah, that needs to be saved. That need We need to fight back against people who want to take that away in the interest of, of throttling information, making money. Because I'm willing to bet that, at least in this country, that's where the majority of, of the, the um, uh, not competition, um, um, the word I'm looking for, um, intent, I guess, um, lies here with, with like the larger companies like AT&T, Verizon, Time Warner, which, by the way, speaking of Comcast and Time mm. Warner, to- Comcast thinks Monopoly is just a game, apparently, because that's what they're trying to get, because they, they, they've been in talks with buying up Time Warner. And Ooh. it's like, yeah, you're just a little closer to a monopoly there. And I believe monopolies in this country are <gasps> illegal. But they have money, so it's okay. Yeah. Yeah. So. Well, and it is about money. Yeah. John Thorne, the senior vice president uh, and deputy general counsel of Verizon, argued that they don't have any incentive to make large investments to develop advanced fiber optic connections. Um if they can't charge higher preferred access fees to companies that use that want to take advantage of those fiber optic networks. So, so because they're not <laughs> going to be able to make, Sorry. you know, you know what you, you install here, here's how you do it. Okay. You install those. Okay. Okay. Whatever, you know, for your regular consumer, keep the prices the same, you know, maybe a little bit more if you need to cover like labor costs, if they were a little bit more than what you thought, you know, you know, a small price hike wouldn't. I would not balk at too much. A small one. Now, if you go from like saying thirty dollars a month for access to one hundred fifty per month for access, that's a little much. But you know, five dollars per customer, especially if you get a lot more customers because of this. Okay, I I can live with that. That's that's livable. See, I I was thinking about it more in terms of like. Um, like when you live in a condo and they need to do something like fix your roof, mm-hmm. you know, you don't own the place, but you still pay a fee to help them redo the roof because you still get to take advantage of it. Right. So that, so, that little bit, that's understandable. I, I can understand that. Mm-hmm. But, if, but if you're wanting to make more money, you know, yeah. It, and I know a lot of companies, that they, they, they would have diff- – they could have different access fees for like – like large companies, for example, you know, I'm looking at the big cats on Wall Street. They probably have some of the best internet connections in the goddamn country, and you know, you could charge mm-hmm. those guys out the ass. They can afford it. <laughs> no, but um, but if if that's if money is your thing, charge the one percent more. Don't charge everybody. Don't charge the little guy more. You know, charge the one percent. Yeah. Well. And by charging the one percent, you could also end up helping the little guy, and in the end, you will still make more money. Well, in a way, that's what they're trying to do. You know, Thorne and the guy, the deputy general counsel of Verizon, mm-hmm. um, and other ISPs have accused Google and Skype of freeloading um, for using a network of, you know, fiber optic lines and cables that the phone company spent billions of dollars to build. Yeah. And, and, and that's, you know, in a way, that's why they're going after 
you know, Google and Netflix and whatever, because they say, well, you know, we built this infrastructure. So if you're going to use it in this manner, then we want more money from you or we're going to slow down your connections. That's like, that's, it's not like a government wanting to like, oh God. It's a proverbial gun to the head. Yeah. You know? Well, there is that. I, I was also going to take the example of, you know, closing off two highways just because you don't like all of the people using your highway. Well, two lanes <laughs> and a highway. Yeah. Well, as far as I'm concerned, this is the phone company's own fault. You know, phone com. I don't know if you know about this, but phone companies um, own the last mile of service mm -hmm. um, to, to wherever it's going. So, you know, cables won't be owned by the same company all the way, but the one who is actually giving the service owns that last mile of connection. And it's like, okay, you work so hard to keep that connection, mm -hmm. you know, and now you're upset that people are using it. Oh no! That's kind of your own fault. Yeah, I mean, I mean, and I think one of you mentioned earlier that Google is laying cable, laying fiber elsewhere as well. So it's not like they're just yeah, yeah, they've started to do it. Yeah, so so they can do this and they'll be like, hey, you know what? We're no longer freeloading on your asses. Fuck off. You know, or we don't have to freeload on your asses. It's up to the consumer if they want to go through us or go through you guys some more. And if they go through us, well, you're going to lose money unless you can find a way to, you know, beat our service. You know, Cat well, wait, wait, wait. Oh, wait, that would be competition, wouldn't it? Ah! Yeah. <laughs> I, I, I am liking that idea. I am going to, I am supporting Google in this because <laughs> we need more options. I mean, and, and there are also, from what I am understanding, there are also local ISPs, like small ISPs in local areas or whatever, that would not follow under some of these things that AT&T and Verizon and Time Warner and the, and the like are trying to push. You know, they, they will take a stand for net neutrality. And uh, I don't know if it's different now. I remember uh, Josh Hadley talking about it on a few episodes of What the Fuck, like about a year or two ago. And at the time, his ISP was saying, yeah, you know what, all of this stuff, no, we're not going to go through it. No, no, we're, we're going to be on the up and up for you guys. So so there are at least some small companies. And if you have a small company around you, I really hope you do. If I don't, I don't think we do around here, unfortunately. But if you have a smaller ISP that's you know, willing to you know, put their neck on the line and say, hey, you know what, you know, use the internet however you need as long as it's legal. You know, we won't throttle you. We won't do this or that. If there's any issues with it, it's probably just going to be just a technical issue. It's not because of us wanting to get more money from you. So there are those out there, and I, I highly suggest you go and you look those up, if if at all possible. Oh, <sighs> oh so yeah. Um, Misha, I know you've been kind of silent for the most part. Do you do you have much to add about uh, net neutrality? Uh, nothing that I haven't already said. I just, I, the whole the whole thing is just insane. Yeah, it's it's. I hope. I mean, honestly, I I, I will say I really haven't been keeping up that much on it. Um, I probably would have if. If I, I guess if I thought it was going to affect me directly anytime soon, I don't know. Maybe that's ignorant of me, but I don't know. It just, I just hope it doesn't come to some fucking bullshit like jacking up prices like five times what they are. Yeah. Because uh, money's already stretched thin enough for everybody, I know. Especially those who don't have jobs right now and, you know. Here's the thing with that, too. Uh what about people who, you know, need the internet to find jobs? Mm hmm Hi. Uh, yeah. So, like, uh, one of, you know, one of the company, one of the internet companies decides, oh, you know, you can't use monster.com anymore. Um, because I, uh, that's, uh, the classifies through our local paper actually go through monster.com. Oh, dear. So, so that would be, that yeah. would be fucking up, not just the little person, but little businesses, too. Well, a lot of well, things I'm... go online, like internet banking, um, mm -hmm. you know, some people do their jobs through the internet, like they have their call list for stuff that they, if they do, do from home, um, there's a shit ton of stuff that it could affect, not just, you know, 
people who want to, you know, make and upload videos or, you know, who want to do this, that, and the other thing, it affects a lot of stuff. Yeah, in addition, in addition, this actually just kind of popped back into my head. My dad, he does, you know, he does insurance. A lot of the stuff he does, it's through the internet. Yep. So, yeah, that would be affecting him, too. I mean, in fact, like, like last weekend or the weekend before, uh, our connection was out for a good eight or ten hours. We don't know why. But it was That's just, right, you told us that. Yeah, it was out, and my dad was pissed because he's like, I've got shit I gotta do with this thing, man. Right, because he, yeah, well, he was losing hours. Uh huh. A lot of people telecommute to their jobs now. Yeah. You know, you don't yes, have to go do. into an office to work. Like, my mom is downstairs working right now. Yeah. Yeah, Ben used to do that when he worked for, uh, when he did IT work for the Glad Factory down in Amherst County. And, um, Sometimes, like, if it, was, if it was really snowy out or whatever, uh, you know, he couldn't get out to go. Because it's, 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 it's uh, a little ways out there and lots of twisty, windy roads or whatever. Then he could actually work remotely from home. And if, you know, somehow the internet got fucked, you know, he wouldn't have been able to do that. Yeah. A lot, and not, not even just telecommuting. A lot of people, like, okay, like, uh... My physical therapy off, uh, the, the, where I go to physical therapy at the orthopedic center, their system is online. How are they supposed to keep track of shit? Um, yeah, know, a lot of hospitals are, and doctors yep. and whatnot are moving to fully online systems. That way they can communicate with each other much faster and your Absolutely. records are more available to them. Yeah, yeah I, can't, I can't think of any doctors that I know that haven't switched to digital. You know, it... it so basically, this could be fucking over a lot of people. Yeah, and and well, they don't care. They get their money. Uh, oh yeah, <laughs> the NSPs aren't even necessarily going after the right people. In France, Orange, who is a, a telecommunications operator, complained that traffic from YouTube and Google consisted of you know fifty percent of total traffic on their network. Yeah, wow. and. So they reached a deal with Google where they charge Google for the traffic on the network. And keep in mind, this is in France. Right. Um, and some people also thought that uh, Orange's rival, uh, ISP Free, throttled YouTube traffic. And, uh, you know, there's this investigation that was done, and it just revealed that the network was congested during peak hours. Ah. You know, so if you just have a lot of people doing something at a particular time that doesn't necessarily make it you know one person's fault right or one company's fault right oh so so with all of that um i i, I think i think we've pretty much said what needs to be said about net neutrality haven't we or can i there... add one more thing oh yeah yeah. Sure. yeah one more thing i want to add with the fucking people over Students who have to do fucking research for yes. stuff. Ah, okay. <laughs> <laughs> I just they're coming I for can't. her. No. <laughs> yeah, I li- uh, Yeah, I'm sure you can hear that because I, I live three and a half miles from the ER, so you always hear a sirens going up and down the road. Yeah. Actually, a couple weeks ago, for like a solid ten minutes, it was ambulances, police cars, and fire trucks. And I just discovered that we live like literally like a quarter of a mile from a uh, place where the fire trucks are. I'm like, that was so I'm southern like, of you, by the way. Ambulance. I know. <laughs> I know. I'm so Virginia sometimes, but yeah, the fire trucks, like I, they, I didn't know there's a fire department right down the road. I'm like, Oh, that's here. Cause we had to turn around because snow was blocking something, which I'm glad it's finally fucking gone. That's snowstorm, man. That was terrible. Yeah, I've I've been hearing the horror stories, and I I both wish I had been there because it would have been cooler. And at least no. when it's cooler, then I could wrap always wrap up and get warmer. Down here, it's been going hot, cold, hot, cold, hot, cold, hot, cold, hot, cold, hot, cold. You know what? Shut up and take our snow. <laughs> please, please get it here. Uh, and the the weather is so wonky because it's supposed to get up to sixty five degrees some uh, some of the days here, and the next week it's down to seventeen degrees at night again. It's like make uh, up your fucking mind, Virginia weather. I hate you. Go home weather. You're drunk. All right, exactly. Get us back on topic to to finish off the show. Yeah. Sorry, <laughs> it's yeah. all right. Um, but yeah, it's you know I don't. 
I don't think the ISPs need to go to the government to get the kind of money they want. You know, the thing about Orange in France is, you know, they made an agreement with Google. If they want to make an agreement with Google, that's great. But the government should just, just straight up support net neutrality because mm -hmm. basically every Western country in the world who has had this come up in, you know, their different bodies of government has said they support net neutrality. And of course, the it's US. all of the Eastern countries. It's it's Russia and China and South Korea that are like, nope. Yeah. You know, we're going to we're going to cut access to certain things. Yeah. It's just dragon, you know, you know, you know, US government, you're dragging us down. Stop it. Ah. So, yeah. So that is our, our big spiel on on net neutrality. I know I know we touched a few sub topics again, a few repeats here and there, but that happens. And hopefully that helps drive the point home. Oh. But uh, but we do have a few minutes left in the show, and I I kind of want to have a little bit of a kind of kind of a little uh, palate cleanser to end the show on. We spent we <laughs> spent the majority of the hour talking about net neutrality, and now this is just something a little fun, well comparatively speaking fun, and a lot of us can just scream bullshit at and and or say yeah that's right. Um, what I've what can I, I just say one last thing. Yes. Yes. <laughs> Sorry. Um. <laughs> I just want to reiterate to people why this is important, mm -hmm. because if the government charges you more to get access to certain things um, and say, you know, go to certain websites and say certain things and upload certain things, that's starting to infringe on your First Amendment rights. That is. That very much so, is. So, you know, support net neutrality. Yes. Again, they would suit Liberty University because they love taking away people's first amendment rights. Yeah. But and I digress. <laughs> Two shots. No, because I, there's that whole thing, you know, in the first amendment about, you know, the whole not the, the religion thing in government and they can't seem to be able to read. If they could read, then, you know, they would understand what the fucking thing meant. Ah. Yeah. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> I hate them just a little bit. Just a little bit. I don't blame you. Not that you can tell. <laughs> but, okay, back to the the fun palate cleanser. Yes, and <laughs> this is this is what's known as man rules, and I found no, this. No, God, no! Is this from Byers? Fucking no! I don't remember is... whose it was. And, and... no, no, is this no? I'm pretty sure this is the one that Bio posted. <laughs> It was like, hee hee hee, this is funny. And I chewed him out. And this and, is, and this is and, why I brought this on for... And his late, one of his lady friends was like, this isn't, this isn't terrible. This is funny. No! <laughs> uh, we haven't even got to the list. All right, sorry. No, Paul, you have to hear this shit. You have to hear this shit. It's something that would be on returnofkings.com. Yeah, it, it would be. Go ahead. No, listen to this shit, Holly. Yes. Okay, this, is, okay. this is this is this is the thing because um, <clears throat> I'm I'm sure we've all seen around the net that there are like the the rules for women or what have you, you know, and 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 people sometimes they get a laugh, sometimes they get offended, whatever. But some guy went out there. I don't think this was originally written by Biohybrid. I think I, he, oh, but he loved it. He fucking loved it. Yeah, <laughs> I, it, it might have been from him that I got this. I don't know. There, there are a few. There are a few candidates on my list I could have gotten this from. Uh -huh. But um, it reads, and it's and it's mostly in all caps. So it's like the ultimate warrior is writing this, except <laughs> uh, all the references to destrucity. It's funny because it's true. Yes, <laughs> and and no, I'm not going to yell the entire thing at you. Uh, but it reads, it's... at last, a guy has taken the time to write all this down. Finally, the guy's side of the story. By the way, nope. the guy's side of this story is the only part that is not in all caps. Sorry. Go ahead. Yeah. <laughs> I must admit it's pretty good. We always hear the rules from the female side. Now here are the rules from the male side. These are our rules. Please note, these are all numbered <clears throat> number one on purpose. <laughs> They can't count? Apparently Oh, my not. God. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Men are not mind readers is, is the first one here, which, okay, nobody's a mind reader, really. Yeah, no well, shit. Yeah. Well, unless you have, you know, those abilities. Yeah. But I digress. Exactly. 
for the most part, we are not mind readers. Nobody. And I, when I buy we, I mean men and women on oh, that, this, in that case. So, it just gets better and better. Yeah. Just keep going. Learn to work the toilet seat. You're a big girl. If it's up, put it down. We need it up. Fuck you need it down. <laughs> you don't hear us complaining about you leaving it down. It's actually false, but okay. Uh... Yeah. that That's one of those – oh, God. That is the, the argument of the ages. Uh, I personally don't give a shit whether it's up or down. If if I'm staying with somebody, in, in fact, when I was living with Lady Renee, she would she would ask, you know, put it down when you're not using it. And you know what? She was polite about it. She was fine with it. it. It took me a little bit to get used to because up to that point, I was used to either staying with other guys or just having my own bathroom outright. So you know, it took a little getting used to. But it's it's more of a courtesy thing. Instead honestly. of that argument, how about instead of the toilet seat up or down, how about cleaning up after your fucking self when you piss on the floor? Exactly. <laughs> that on works. The toilet, on the toilet seat or anywhere near it because gross. Uh, yeah, exactly. But but because you're a big boy and your arms aren't broke. Exactly. Okay, condescending list. <laughs> yes. And at any rate, you know, leaving the toilet seat down, that's more of a courtesy thing, and I like to be courteous, so, you know. Crying is blackmail. No. No! No, 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 no. By and large, it is not. If she is crying, then it's either something she saw on TV. Some women are that sensitive. I've seen it. I am. Either, you know, or somebody hurt you in some way. And if she's crying because of something you said, that's not blackmail. That's you being a dick. Yep. And if she's using crying as blackmail, then you she need then you, then you both need to have, sit down and have a good talk. Oh, you know what? Returning yeah, people it, say it's about not that. Like that some that people makes... don't use. Yeah. Uh, oh. <laughs> it's not like some people don't use crying as blackmail but there's a big difference between all crying and somebody being a bitch i mean let's face it i've seen guys do it too yeah yep mm -hmm. mm. ask for what you want let us be clear on this one subtle hits do not work strong hints do not work obvious hints do not work just say it how about if the guy doesn't fucking listen my husband doesn't listen yeah and even if you tell him what you want seriously yeah, and you know what? I'm going to come out and say it. I've been guilty of that as well. I mean, it's just... Uh, I mean, yeah, and some guys, some people, yeah, sometimes you do need to just come right out and say it. Some of them, you know, it it, 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 it does not apply to all guys, obviously. It does not apply to all women. Some people you might need to do that with, but not every one of them. So, so whoever wrote this list, do not speak for all of us, guys. Thank you. Hmm. Yes and no are perfectly acceptable answers to almost every question. You know what else is a perfectly acceptable answer to almost every question? Fuck you. Yeah, really. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, if it's a yes or no question, it's a yes or no question. If you want just a yes or no answer, then say so. You know? You know, I try and do that myself. I don't always remember, but I try to do so. Yeah. Uh. Come to us with the problem only if you want help solving it. That's what we do. Sympathy is what your girlfriends are for. You insensitive prickcock. Yeah, that just makes you a douchebag. Yeah. If, if you can't listen to a problem and be supportive, you're you're just a douchebag. Because yeah. guess what? I'm a grown ass woman. I can solve my own fucking problems. Yeah. Sometimes. You know, and if I need your help, I'll let you know. Yeah. But you know, if you're a guy who's supposed to be there for me, you know, if you're my friend or my lover or whatever, you should be able to listen to my problems and offer sympathy and, you know, not just treat me like I can't handle my own life. Yeah. I mean, I personally, if, if somebody was to come to me to a problem, I will probably sit there while I'm doing the sympathy thing and in the back of my mind be like, okay, how, how, how do I help this? Can I help this? But that's just how I am. Not every guy is like that. And if there's nothing I can do, then at the very least, I can offer my support and say, here, shoulder, cry. I'll, 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 I'll dry up the tears later. You know. So, anything we said six months ago is inadmissible in an argument. In fact, all comments become null and void after seven days. You never no. lived with Lady Renee, have you? 
<laughs> oh God, we get into we still get into arguments every now and then, and she'll pull up something that I said like three years ago. Oh, so yeah, and you know what? It's still admissible because <laughs> if um, she's pulling it up, it's something that I haven't changed very much, so it, it still applies. Oh, if you think you're fat, you probably are. Don't no. ask us. No. Fuck you. Uh -oh. Wow. No. This is, this is this is the list. This is the list that was on Bio's thing, and he was like, tee hee 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 about it. This yeah. is why you're single. Yeah, dude. I'm just like, okay, you know what? I, you know, I'm I'm gonna use Becky as an example because she has done this. She she has told me a few times that she feels like she is fat, and and Holly, you you got to meet her. You you you've seen how small mm -hmm. she is. She is no way fat. You know. You know, maybe I mean she has a little padding, but compared to like me, uh, uh, no, she is not fat. So if she thinks she's fat, yeah, I'm gonna tell her no, you're not fat. So no, just because you think you're something doesn't mean you are. I mean, hey, I think I'm buff and could probably out bench press Arnold Schwarzenegger. Doesn't mean I can. That's adorable. Yeah. <clears throat> If something we said can be interpreted two ways, and one of the ways makes you sad or angry, we meant the other one. Go fuck off. Yeah, you're just trying to cover your ass at this point. Cause, Jesus. Yeah. Because cause I admit, I say things that can be interpreted more than one way. And I usually, when, it, when I do that, it's usually intentional. And because I know how people think when I say certain things. I like to, to make those certain things, and then, you know, it, it's a whole mind game thing. But it's all in good fun, and it's and I'm not doing it to cover my own ass either. I try to make it very clear of that. Sometimes I don't always succeed. Oh, you can either ask us to do something or tell us how you want it done, not both. If you already know how best to do it, just do it yourself. Right, what if she's incapacitated, you fucking asshole? You know, I mean, or or what if she's busy and needs something else done at the same time? You know, I mean, I mean, yeah, guess what? You can still ask us to do something and let us know how you want it done, because if we don't know, we've got to know somehow. You want us to do it? Let us know how you want it. Okay. You know, like if, like, okay, let's say you want us to make you a sandwich, for example. You know, okay, make me a sandwich. Okay. You know, and we go in there, we make, like, say, a bologna sandwich with lettuce, and you didn't want that. So, you know, how do you want your sandwich would be a logical question, would it not? It would be logical, yes. Yeah. So, yeah, to, to only make the sandwich and not knowing how she wants it done is, is stupid. And, and I know the sandwich analogy is, is, is kind of tame comparison, but yeah. Whenever possible, please say whatever you have to say during commercials. Fuck no. No. Because see, here's the thing: we live in the age of DVR and Netflix, and, and media that we can pause. And if we can't pause it, we can catch it on the internet later. And I'm sorry, I don't think any woman is going to spend ten minutes while on fire just to wait to tell her husband, "Hey, I'm on fire. I need to get this fire put out." Or I broke my ankle, but I don't want to. I but you know, waiting till the commercial comes on to scream in agony about it because I don't want to bother you because there's not a commercial on. Go fuck off. Yeah. <sighs> Christopher Columbus did not need directions, and neither do we. Bullshit. You've okay. never driven trucks, have you, buddy? <laughs> Oh yeah, let let's let's see you try and drive something from Terre Haute, Indiana, all the way up to Egan, Minnesota. Yeah, let's let's see how well you can find how to get there without directions. Yeah, your balls do not tell you the way, my friend. All men see in only sixteen colors, like Windows default settings. Peach, for example, oh. is a fruit, not a color. Pumpkin is also a fruit. We have no idea what mauve is. I watch Project Runway. I beg, I beg to differ. Yeah, and, and <laughs> way to insult your fellow man, asshole. Mm. Uh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. If we ask what is wrong and you say nothing, we will act like nothing's wrong. We know you are lying, but it's just not worth the hassle. 
then then you're not worth dating, and this is probably why you're single. Exactly. I mean, especially because it says nothing here about tone. You know, if the tone really suggests nothing is wrong, then okay. But if there's that tone, and I've learned to pick up on it. If there's that tone that says, yeah, something really is wrong, I just don't feel like going into it. I will, I will give a similar tone back and say, okay, but I'm, I'll be over here, you know. You know, I don't believe you, but I'll be over here, you know, when you're ready, if you want to talk. That's how you do it. You know, that, that, that's how you handle that. Because guess what? It is worth the hassle. If, when you a if you ask a question you don't want an answer to, expect an answer you don't want to hear. Bullshit. Yeah, I, I think most questions, unless they're meant to be rhetorical, you really, you most people would want an answer to. You know, just, 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 there is that. Uh, uh. When we have to go somewhere, absolutely anything you wear is fine. Really. No, it's not. That depends. Mm. I mean, I'm sorry. I, I mean, I, I like looking at my mate when she's just in her bra and panties, but we can't go out that way. Nope. You know, we, we, we just can't do it. Not unless you're hanging out with Victoria's Secret models. I know, right? <laughs> <laughs> uh, Although, that would be fun. Give me Miranda Kerr, though, and you can have the rest. There you, go. Um, <laughs> there you go. Don't ask us what we're thinking about unless you are prepared to do such, such, such topics as football or motorsports. Um, I like football. Yep. What the fuck? Hops, yeah, I do too. That's what I thought. <laughs> I, I, people know me as a sports girl. Seriously. Wrestling, football, hockey, and baseball. Yeah. Your argument is invalid. <laughs> yeah. And, and, and how many thespian talk shows have, have, have been like delayed or held up because of football, Holly? <laughs> Maybe a few. Yeah. No. <laughs> and you know what? I know women who are into motorsports too. I have one. I have a female friend who has been a drag racer. So Sweet. yeah. Uh, so yeah. And of course, not all men discuss football or motorsports. I'm not personally a big fan of either one of them. I'm more into video games. I'm more into reading books. I'm more into soap operas. Okay, one soap opera, but you know, whatever. Uh, you have enough clothes, and right under it, you have too many shoes. That, that, that... Wait. Um, well, yes, I do, but <laughs> I why does that matter? Points. Who yeah. cares? Yeah, guess what? It's, like... it's nice to have more options. And it's probably like, yeah, you probably have a drawer full of mismatched and holy socks, your point. I don't even have a drawer of that. I just have them in Not you, basketball. not you particularly. <laughs> no, I know, I know, I know. Dude bros. Yeah. Or or as I've taken to calling them, douche bros. Yeah, I'm, I'm glad that you started using that term. Yes. I've done something right here. <laughs> <laughs> yes. I am in shape. Round is a shape. You know? Well, on the yes, hand, but... You can't argue with that logic. Uh, but, if but, hand... but, but if we are round and if we are round and, and we say something about it, oh no, we're fat. Cause, and because we're saying it, it probably means that we are, right? Right? Uh, Fuck uh, you. <laughs> yeah. Oh, God. And the last one. Thank you for reading this. Yes, I know I have to sleep on the couch tonight, but did you know men really don't mind that? It's like camping. Bullshit! Um, yes, how we, we do. put the couch outside in the middle of a fucking blizzard? There you go. That's where it belongs. And no, I, I've, I've ended up having to sleep on the couch for a while. For, for different reasons. And at, at least the couch I was sleeping on, not very comfortable. Not in the long run. No. So, no. No, 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 no. Maybe once in a while. Maybe if we, like, get into something and we just fall asleep, that's fine. But, no, preferably... I, I think I can speak for most men or most people even. Give us a bed. That that would be that would be nice. So those were the man rules as written by the ultimate warrior as if he was a douche bro. I don't as know. if he were biohybrid. 
<laughs> I regret nothing. I don't oh, care. Oh. He posted it. I'm making it a point to call him out this time, especially because he posted it and argued with me about it. Well, well, I have several female friends that thought it was funny. It's like, I don't care if five females told you it was funny. It doesn't make it right, and it doesn't make it not sexist. Fuck you. <laughs> exactly. I mean, humor is relative, but sexism is sexism. Yep. Yeah. Oh, so with that, we did go over a little bit on time, but that's okay. I, I, I think, you know, we covered a lot of good stuff today. We had some good palate cleansers. So we are going to get out of here for this week. Thank you guys for listening. Uh, if you want to find us all on the social medias and the everything, um, I am on Twitter at gomer 21 X. I am also on rtgomer.com and nerdvice.com. And as well as as well as a YouTube channel, which you may be watching this right there on the YouTube channel. Hello. Uh, with playlists and everything. Um, and there's also the Patreon page, which, you know, is basically my way of saying, yeah, I'm having a, too, I'm having a more difficult time finding a 9-to-5 job as I would like, and I need a little bit of help. And, and it's mostly, at this point, going towards video production, audio production, equipment, that sort of thing. That's where your money goes. And if you don't – if not donate, but pledge $20 a month or more, you get ad space, which I've done my shopping. It's a pretty good deal. So $20 a month, ad space, goes towards you know upping the equipment, upping everything else, studio space, web space, etc. So your money goes towards a good cause. Um and that's at patreon.com slash gomer 21 double x Also, because I need to remember to keep doing this, uh, my girlfriend, she also has a Patreon page for her artwork or commissions. And she is over at patreon.com slash beckyhop, which I believe Misha got a commission from her. Yee! It's the best commission ever. It's of me and Kevin Smith. Yes. It's awesome. Yes. Go So go and support her, support the site, all that good stuff. Now that I'm done being a whore, uh, Holly, it's your turn. <laughs> Thanks. <laughs> Not sure you realize quite how that came out, but oh, um, shit. <laughs> you can you can follow me on all sorts of social media: Tumblr, Twitter, Instagram, whatever. Um, at Gooky Gox, G O O K Y G O X. Um, my Etsy store is also Gooky Gox. dot com. I make jewelry, so please go check it out. Yes. Um, and my Facebook fan page is Holly Christine Brown. Yay! And Misha? I am all over the place, y'all. I am on Twitter as Misha underscore Mayhem. You can also find Bacon Stripper, Snarkcast, and Snark Sports on there, as well as on Facebook. I write articles on our Gamer site. I am on Space Monkey Mafia Studios with Bacon Strippers, uh, Snarkcast, and Snark Sports. And I am on Tumblr as Misha Mayhem 84 So if you want to see a bunch of wrestling posts and things about bacon and fandoms, find me there. What? All <laughs> right. So um, with that, again, thank you guys for listening. We will catch you next time. And until then, this is Gomer the Ranting Thespian with Holly Christine and Misha Mayhem signing off. Bye. Laters. Constructive Deconstruction is an RT Gomer Productions presentation. Check us out at rtgomer.com.